Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be comparing two popular ways of making fresh pasta. One way is using a KitchenAid mixer along with pasta attachments. And the other way we're going to be exploring is using a dedicated pasta making machine. In our case, we'll be using a Philips 7000 series pasta maker. Which way is right for you? Watch this video and find out. So you ready? Let's get into this. If you've got a KitchenAid mixer, one of the perks that you have with those is that you have a little adapter on the front of it for all kinds of accessories that you can buy. Those accessories include pasta making attachments. There's an attachment for making the flat sheets, and there's also separate attachments for cutting them into different shapes and sizes. One of the things to note is that KitchenAid branded attachments are pretty expensive. If you wanted to get a full set of pasta attachments, you're probably going to spend around $300 or so. However, on Amazon or eBay, you'll be able to find off-brand versions of all that stuff for a fraction of what those cost. Obviously, if you're going this route and you don't already have a mixer, you're talking about spending a little bit of money. The attachments are already going to set you back a little bit, and then the KitchenAid mixers tend to be around three dollars or $400 by themselves. If you don't want to spend all that money, you can always just manually roll your dough. And as far as those pasta attachments go, you can get hand-cranked versions of those that just sit on your countertop. Those actually work really good and it's typically the kind of thing you'd see in a professional kitchen. However, one thing about those is that they use a clamping mechanism to hold them down onto your countertop. And if you don't have an island in your kitchen, they can be a little bit cumbersome to use. Also, another thing to consider by doing that means that you're going to be hand rolling your dough. And that can get a little bit strenuous on your hands, especially if you don't do it very often. If you're going the mixer route, it's as easy as taking all your components, throwing them into the mixing bowl and letting the thing do its work. Once that's all mixed, you switch from the beater attachment to your dough hook, both of which will normally come with your mixer regardless of what brand you get. And that will do the rest of the work to get your dough prepped. From there, you just roll the dough into a ball, cover it in plastic, and you put it in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes. That way, the gluten has a little bit of time to activate. Once that time is up, you take it out of the refrigerator, cut it into a few pieces, and then you would run that through the pasta sheet attachment several times to get it flat, thin, and uniform. And then once you get it to the width that you want, you change the attachment to whatever pasta shape you want to make, run your newly made sheets through the machine, and then you can ball up your pasta. From there, you can either use it right away or you can freeze it. Using that method to make pasta has a little bit of a learning curve, but really it only takes a couple of times before you start getting really good at it. Another reason for doing it this way is you get really amazing results on your pasta. The texture on it ends up being spot on. The main downside of doing it this way outside of the cost, which can be pretty high if you don't have any of this stuff already, is the fact that you're probably going to make a little bit of a mess doing it. You're going to end up sprinkling a lot of flour and stuff to make sure things don't stick together, and that flour can end up on your countertops and your floor. So I'd recommend coming up with a strategy to keep things tidy and that way your cleanup doesn't get out of hand. The other way we're talking about to make fresh pasta is by using a dedicated pasta making machine. In our case, we're using the Philips 7000 series pasta maker. These machines come at the task from a little bit different angle. There's no making of the dough, waiting for gluten to activate, putting it in the balls, wrapping them in plastic, none of that. All you have to do to make pasta in this machine is turn it on, throw in the flour, water, egg, and whatever else you're using, and the machine will automatically mix your components, and then it'll spit the pasta out the front. The front of the machine has a little pattern disc on it and you can actually change that disc out to all different types of pasta shapes. The machine uses a really high pressure method of just squeezing the dough out through those holes and you end up getting fresh pasta right away. So from a time perspective, using a pasta making machine is way faster than using a KitchenAid mixer. In fact, this way you're probably going to have finished pasta whereas the other way you'd still have dough sitting in the refrigerator. Texture on the pasta that comes out the front is a little bit different. At least with this machine, the pasta that comes out the front of the machine is a lot more fragile than what you get out of the KitchenAid mixer. It's not so fragile that it just falls apart on you or anything like that, but definitely you gotta be a little bit more careful with it than you would the other way. As far as cleanup goes, pasta machines are usually really easy to clean up. In the case of our Philips pasta maker, it was basically just cleaning the dough bin, scrubbing the blade, and cleaning out the pasta disc on the front. Also, in my case, I didn't really have to sprinkle anywhere near as much flour onto it as I did with the KitchenAid method, so therefore I didn't make anywhere near as much of a mess either. If you're looking at the recipe that you would use to do these two different methods, you'll notice that they are way, way different. 
Using the mixer or doing it by hand, you do end up with a dough ball that looks a little bit like pizza dough. Also, personally, when I make it in the mixer, I don't use any water. I just use a little bit of egg to moisten the mix. You can see that texture forming right away whenever you're mixing it. And once you've done it a couple of times, you're going to know exactly whether you've got that right or not before you get anywhere near finished. That way you've got plenty of time to make corrections if it's a little bit too dry or a little bit too wet. By the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. When you make pasta in a pasta making machine, however, the texture is completely different in the machine. If you're getting texture that looks anything like a dough ball in a pasta making machine, it'll probably break it before it pushes that pasta out. What you want in that machine is a consistency of the dough that looks a little bit like cornmeal, except that it clumps into smaller pieces. If it's granule, it's too dry, and if you put just a tiny bit too much liquid in there, it's going to be way too wet and it's going to stick to the machine. So really, if you buy a pasta making machine and you've made pasta fresh before in other ways, you're going to have to get used to it because all of your recipes are going to change. In fact, when I got mine, I had to try several times before I can get it right because I kept making the dough too thick. If you were making about a pound of pasta in the mixer, total time start to finish, including the dough sitting in the fridge, you're talking about right around 45 minutes or so before you have finished pasta. If you're using a pasta making machine, you're probably going to be done in about 20 minutes max, and you're not going to have as much stuff to clean up either. So with the mixer, tack on another 10 minutes or so to clean your kitchen up, just depending on how clean you are. Which means if you're like me, probably want to add on an hour. When I bought that Philips machine, it ended up costing me right at 300 bucks. So if you're talking about total cost between the mixer and the pasta making machine, the pasta making machine is still probably going to be a little bit cheaper, unless of course you already have the mixer. With all that being said, the most important part is probably which one makes better pasta? The answer to that question could be a little bit subjective because for a lot of people, the entire experience combines together to form which method they like better. What I'm talking about for this video though is pure taste and texture, all other things being equal. For me personally, using my KitchenAid mixer does yield better pasta. It's a little bit more of a pain in the neck to make it that way, but the finished product is really, really good. For the Philips pasta making machine, it's still really good, but it just doesn't quite get to that same level. But even with that being said, both are still better than buying anything out of the grocery store. It definitely is less convenient than just buying it off the store shelf though. What it ends up coming down to is whether or not it's important enough for you to make it yourself. If you like this video, you might like this playlist right here where we show you a few different recipes for making fresh pasta in a Philips 7000 series pasta maker. Those include making the pasta in the machine and also making the sauce to go with them. If you're a pasta lover, might be worth checking out. Well, that's it for now. I hope to see you back again here really soon. And until that time, I'm Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.